So we have a we have a question from from uh, H Lena, uh, which is a great great question. I really love this question. Uh, I love the INS key bindings, but it's but I really miss modern IDE interfaces. Uh, should I try to make uh, IDE from Vim or should I use IDE with Vim bindings? Uh, and I've, I've already made another video that shows how I I use VS Code for a full two years. Uh, and um, frankly, abandoned VI and Vim for any kind of thing except for server work for a very long time, for many of the same reasons that people are people like to use VS Code. Some of the smartest people uh, that I have in my mentor community won't touch VI unless they have to. Uh, but to be fair, they are also the kind of people who are really into machine learning. They're really into projects that are you know on that computer, and they never leave that computer. Uh, and that's really the answer. My answer is that. If you are, the more inclined you are to be on a single system, uh, the more, I, and by the way, the more lines of code that you're editing and working with, uh, the more I think an IDE matters, um, at, you know, and a big one. And whatever that, if it's a graphic IDE, if it's a terminal IDE, at that point, I don't really think it matters because the whole point is you want to be efficient in your way on that computer and you don't need to be effective on another computer. Uh, I still believe everybody who starts out should be effective on multiple computers. Uh, yeah, and and so all of the IDs, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through and, and rate them all, but the answer is yes. I do think that having an IDE is fine, and I think you should use an IDE. Uh, people reminded me that Linus Torvalds uses Micro Emacs, uh, and Neil Stallman uses Emacs. Emacs is just another IDE. Um, and frankly, most of, and so a lot of people use big IDEs. Uh, it's become Vim is Vim is lacking many modern features. Uh, I I disagree with that. Uh, you'd have to name a, a modern feature specifically uh, for me to be able to respond to that. I think Vim unfortunately can be tricked out so much right now, and that's what Neo Vim is trying to be. Uh, that it's basically got Emacs envy, and that's fine. That's all fine. It's not something I would ever do. I think it's silly to write a Node plugin for your Vim. <laughs> But my point is that, uh, yeah, integrated development environment. So if you want to use, you know, VS Code or any of the ones that are out there, uh, lightweight, heavyweight, terminal based, uh, if you are going to sit in front of the same screen on the same computer, writing, working on the same coding projects for months at a time, then it makes so much more sense to do one of these things. And, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Uh, however, uh, this is where I want to really punch home. Uh, I've talked many times on the stream about, about my focus for beginners is on becoming uh, site reliability engineers, systems administrators, uh, pen testers, security analysts, security engineers. Uh, and that is what I did. That is my core interest. That's what I did for many, many years. And so my priority, uh, and it's not just my priority, it's the priority of any of these teams in any big company or small, uh, is to be productive on any command line. And I mean any command line, uh, Windows, usually Unix or Linux, uh, but even Windows. And so as soon as you start talking about being productive on any command line and being able to edit files on any command line, uh, the, the choice to do VI uh, or Vim with out any vimisms it becomes much much more important because it's about speed in this career when you are doing system administration you're like making up good things but then all of a sudden you're called on to save the day and that requires being able to be very effective very quickly over a remote system which means having you know wicked good terminal skills uh knowing how to use a terminal emulator uh knowing how to use you know a multiplexer lag -like screen and and above all knowing how to edit files quickly and effectively with nothing but a terminal and the editor that was on that computer uh i have been in many situations where we were staying up, we had global calls. We were trying to save computers uh, from catastrophic crashes. And I'm not exaggerating. And we, <laughs> one of them, we had a guy fall asleep on the on the bridge call. It was really funny. Uh, <laughs> but in those instances, people, engine, you know, vice presidents are on the phone with you, and they're listening to everything you do. You got it done yet? Got it done yet? And when you have that level of pressure, and you're logged into a remote system, and anything you can do could could make it worse or cause it to, cause them to lose data you start to care about these things you start to care about having muscle memory across the board on multiple systems you could start to care about being effective immediately on any unix or linux system and that's where my priorities lie so you're not going to find me 
regularly, particularly now that I'm going for an OSCP and stuff like that, you're not going to you're not going to find me regularly. Yeah, low bandwidth as well using high end systems. So, you know, everybody who uses VS Code always tells me, well, you know, you can remotely edit files with VS Code now. I'm like, OK, imagine me in this scenario where we're on an emergency bridge call because we have to save a computer that's on its way down and we want to take it down gracefully. And and I have to get onto the system and edit files and stuff. And I can't do so because I have to fire up VS Code. Oh, if I had to tell an engineer or a vice president, give me a second, I have to fire up VS Code so I can remotely edit this file. Do you see how silly that sounds? So, so as as always, it's the right tool for the job. And you know, I have obvious biases towards VI because that is my history. That is my focus. That is where I want to go. I want to stay in site reliability engineering and development. And so I, I choose to keep my memory, my finger memory fresh and knowledge and, you know, and able to do anything with VI, even if it means that, that I might not be able to do some of the things that, that, that are nice. For example, uh, symbol, uh, renaming, like is this thing an IDE can do really well. You want to rename a function in a thousand files. Well, it can be done with the shell, but it can be done much more reliably and quickly with an IDE that's designed to do that. So there are obvious great, great, yeah, Vim's the firefighter's choice. And, 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 you know, that's, that's, I like that you put it that way. So survive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So any other questions?